I'm more than delighted to introduce, uh, to start off, uh, Natalia Michatelli uh, of Novelgen, which is a clinical stage oncology company which is focusing on a new breed of bispecific antibodies. So welcome, Natalia, and over to you. Good afternoon, and thank you for the opportunity to present to you. My name is Natalia Michatelli, and I'm the Chief Business Officer at Novelgen. It's my pleasure to tell you about Novelgen. Novelgen was founded in 2019 by globally renowned academic and serial entrepreneur, UCL professor Amit Nathwani. Novelgen is his latest company and it follows his rapidly growing and 2020 US listed gene therapy company, Freeline. In addition to founding Freeline, he's also behind two high profile biotechnology licensing deals. Both of these are in gene therapy, namely a haemophilia B gene therapy product for Unicure and a haemophilia A gene therapy product for Biomarin. Novelgen, as mentioned, was founded in 2019 and is oncology focused, leveraging bispecific antibodies. Our first program is called NVG Triple One and is just about to enter the clinic. It's a first-in-class T-cell engager targeting receptor tyrosine kinase-like orphan receptor 1, RR1. The target RR1 is an exciting target as it should be able to target more than 20 hard-to-treat cancers. But let me first talk more about bispecifics. Bispecific antibodies are an emerging popular class of therapeutics they're gaining popularity as they can interact with two different antigens at the same time and therefore facilitate targeting of multiple disease pathways simultaneously. The bispecifics market is predicted to reach 9 billion by 2030 and it's growing at an impressive 34 CAGA. It's truly an emerging therapeutic area as it's currently only one approved product, namely blinatumumab, which is for acute leukemia, namely ALL. Blinatumumab itself is still growing at a good double digit growth rate per annum. The pipeline of bispecific agents is large with about 120 bispecifics in the clinic. And the majority of these are in the oncology field, but Novogen's NVG111 is the only biospecific T cell engager targeting RR1. In biotech, it's important to move fast, and we're proud of what Novogen has achieved in only two years. The most important aspect is our rich pipeline. Our lead compound is NVG111, and it has the potential to be a pipeline in a product as it has broad application in both liquid and solid tumors. We also have an undisclosed early pipeline that we're working on. In addition to us developing our first product, we also have built out our in-house protein engineering team who are developing new products and features for us. One very innovative feature is our work to develop an ability to have self-regulating drugs. This feature would allow development of drugs that otherwise potentially would be too toxic to be effective. We've also built out our clinical team and have put in place a clinical strategy. We have all the documentation approvals needed and we're able to start our clinical study. We also have put in place manufacturing capabilities. So we have clinical grade supply in readiness for our clinical study and we're putting in place commercial supply plans too. In addition to that, we have funding and we have built a strong IP position. Let me tell you a little bit more about NVG111 and why we believe it's a great opportunity. With our bispecific one-arm target CD3 and the other tumor associated RR1, NVG111 is a next generation T cell engager and it has a dual mode of action namely T-cell mediated killing and also direct inhibition of tumor growth via blocking of the WINT5 signaling. But let's focus on RR1 first. 
As mentioned, RR1 is a cell surface antigen and it's upregulated on cancer cells and also on cancer stem cells. On the right hand side of the slide, you can see a list of cancers where expression of RR1 has been shown, including their rate. You will also see many, many prevalent cancers have RI1 expression, making it a really interesting target. What's also important about RI1 that so far has shown a really good safety. It's shown good safety because it's absent on critical organs and it's limited to low expression in healthy cells. What makes NVG111 RI binder unique is that it also uniquely targets the membrane proximal frizzled domain on RI1. You can see that there in the diagram. NVG111 can therefore target cancer in cancer initiating stem cells, which is a subset of cancer cells, which is commonly resistant to cancer therapies. The reason that they're not so easy to target is that they're considered cold cancers and they're not actively dividing. The importance of this feature is it gives us the potential to reduce the risk of reoccurrence of cancer. Finally, as many of you are scientists in the room, I wanted to show you a little data. This is a subset of our preclinical data. On the left hand side, you see our in vitro data using three different cell lines at different concentrations versus a control of untreated cells. Here we're looking at cell survival, and you can see that with the untreated cells, survival is near 100%, but that the treated cells, you see a strong response in all of the cell types. The cell lines here are all hematological, but we do have more than 25 cell lines that we tested in both liquid and solid tumors, and we see the same response. You might think, yes, yeah, cell lines, that's easy, but does it really work? On the right hand side, you can see our mouse model. And here we treated mice for five days. And you can see on the green line that we saw a tremendous response as well. We're delighted with this data. And along with our full preclinical data and of course our tox data, we're now ready and approved to move into human clinical studies. These studies are about to start. And of course, it's a really pivotal moment for Novelgen. Finally, I'll finish with covering what we achieved to date since we were founded in 2019. And also it provides a good blueprint of what needs to be in place for a biotech company to be able to get a product into the clinic. It covers broadly four areas, corporate, research, development, manufacturing, and their achievements as well. From a corporate perspective, we have assembled a team of highly talented individuals and we've also established infrastructure for them to work in terms of labs and offices. We found capital to fund our endeavors, and that's been a mixture of Series A and grant funding to date. In terms of research, we've conducted preclinical and toxicology experiments for current and future pipeline. And in terms of development, we've identified a clinical research organization to help us with our clinical studies, We've also put in place all our documentation and our contracts, and we're able to start our clinical studies. But of course, very importantly, we've had to gain regulatory approvals to do what we want to do. In terms of manufacturing, we've built an internal team, and that team has led the tech transfer to our selected CMO. So we now have drug product, and that's also ready for our clinical study. There's so much to come from us, of course, and we're excited about what the future holds. So at this point in time, I thank you for your time and interest in Novelgen and what we've been doing. Many thanks, Natalia. Um, I've got to say, it's it's really terrifically exciting um, what you and the team are doing uh, at Novelgen, and and just really impressive how far uh, this company's come, uh, literally from 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 the bench uh, and into the clinic within such a short period of time. It's a real testament um, to the quality of the team uh, and the you know the sheer drive and effort um, that you guys have really been putting in over over the last couple of years, and particularly under pretty trying circumstances. <laughs>
um, over the last 12 months in particular. So we've got about five minutes of questions. Um, I, I pretty much encourage anyone, uh, you know, in the in the audience, um, if you've got any questions, just fire them through, um, and we'll we'll, we'll 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 pick them up here, and um, happy to happy to um, pass them over. Um, uh, but um, I'll, I'll I'll kick off myself. Um, I guess uh, you know I've already commented on on where we've come from. Um, uh, you know what are, what are the next big things uh, for Novel Gen? Where does the company go um, over the next uh, couple of years? Um, and, and you know how do you see the pipeline uh, evolving uh, from where we are now? Great, and, and thank you for all the questions, and thank you for the opportunity. Um, so we're we're at a really interesting inflection point from a Novel Gen perspective because we're going from a preclinical company into a clinical company, and and that's a big step. For any biotech company. I've had the great privilege of, of going through this transition before since I came from Freeline. And I think what's coming for us is, is obviously clinical data. So we're very, very excited to see the, the readout of that. And that's really what's going to be front of mind for, I think, us. And also for all our stakeholders, I think that as you start going into the clinic, your investors get very interested your staff get very interested, the patients get very interested, and, and of course the whole community. So, so I think the clinical data is, the, is, is one big thing. And then the other part um, is really from an operational side, is um, manufacturing. We're going, we're going to be building out that infrastructure. We're going to be building out our research um, infrastructure as well and doing more in terms of our pipeline. And then I guess finally the, the part that's we don't tend to talk so much about is we're going to be also looking for money um, because being a biotech company is not inexpensive. So um, no. we will also be driving some some funding activities. Um, great. And so uh, that that kind of process will be happening over the next you know year or so. Uh, clearly, um, the markets have been quite uh, you know quite quite receptive, um, particularly given what's happened in the last twelve months. So um, all of the best of luck with that. Um, what do you think are the biggest challenges? I mean, you've you, you know you've been at Freeline, you were you, you were there right through their Series C, uh, through their IPO. Um, what do you think the biggest challenges are? Either you know both both from a financing perspective, in terms of you know ultimately getting these things funded, carrying carrying this beyond uh, where you know we are, where we are right now, um, but also from an operational perspective, where do you see where do you see the biggest pitfalls? Yeah, I think the the pitfalls re really is. Um, I think a lot of people that go into biotech, we all think. We're optimists, and um, and we expect that all things are going to go to plan, and they never do. So uh, I think the the biggest pitfall really is is only to plan for success. Um, you need to be able to plan for flexible outcomes. You need to be able to have risk mitigation in place, and and you need to be able to to react to the unexpected and to react yeah. quickly. And um, and I think that's one of those things that. Um, that you just need to get comfortable with that um, the unexpected will come. And I suppose that's, you know, working with good partners as well um, who can, you know, who can be flexible. Um, clearly, um, CRO relationships, CDMO relationships have to be very strong. Um, also, you know, I think what's what's been re what's really, as I say, as, as I say, what's really shone through is just the quality of the team here um, and being able to take those risks, but also respond uh, in, a, in, in, a, in a flexible way. So it's a real credit to the team. Uh, in terms of in terms of what's been achieved, um, and so uh, I'm really pleased to to, to have you here uh, today, Natalia. So th really, th th thanks very much for your time, um, you. and all, all, all of the best of luck for for uh, for the future. Thank you very much, Simon. <laughs>